Welcome back, everybody, to DreamHack Summer 15 uh, as we're getting ready for our round two to begin. And we're just getting underway with heat number one in round two, and we're going to have Forsen versus Deathlord coming up. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, welcome. We recognize that uh, it's been a long time since we actually got to cast a match. It's been about an hour, but that's kind of how the Swiss actually works. So we're ready. Uh, Nimsh and Lothar are here on the desk with me to just walk us through. So what are some of the things that you guys are looking forward to in this upcoming match? Defilor versus Forsen. Well, definitely it's like Defilor is not that known, even though he's known to us. Like Defilor yeah. was second at Gamer Origin 2. He had mm -hmm. a great performance at, uh, at Pinnacles. He qualified, and he I don't know if he played versus Forsen in those sp uh, those Pinnacles, but he finished at top four at least, I think. And from what I remember, he also uh, was ranked really high at EU versus CN, the first one. Yeah. From what, I from what I remember, so he's really known in the pro scene, but not known to the general public. A great player from Greece, facing yeah. Forsen. Everybody knows Forsen. Well, I am pretty sure if you follow Hearthstone on Twitch, you do know uh, Forsen. Deathlord's the one on your screen here, though. Uh, Forsen comes in here having won his first series, too. And, in fact, round two is shaping up to be pretty interesting. There's some big names already starting to clash, uh, you know, over on the other side of, uh, of the player's area, there's actually a huge amount of PCs with people lined up. Uh, there's some other really cool lineups like Raynad versus Powder happening in the winners. Uh, and there's also some people fighting off in the losers. In fact, we have Dog and Nyria. That's going to be the Heat 2 match that we focus. But they're both 0-1. That means one of them is getting eliminated really early on. Yeah, yeah it's actually amazing. So are you, right? Yeah, it's, it's really amazing, but also it's uh, interesting for the viewers because uh, usually when we watch a tournament, mm -hmm. it doesn't have high stakes at the beginning of the uh, of the tournament, right? And right. here, it's already run two, and we'll show during the hit two, the losers match. And one of these guys will not have chance to uh, a chance to advance to the top eight, because he still can do well and be like a 5-2, right? But that he, he falls short to advance to the finals to the playoffs. But 5-2 yeah. in this tournament is still an okay result. Right. Yeah. But it's six, it's 6 1 that counts. If you lose twice, you can't go to the top eight, but at least you can try to, you know, win until you lose at this point. Dog or Nyria is gonna go zero two. One one of them. Um, yeah. and that, that that's pretty crazy to think considering I think the two are stronger players here out of the, the pool of players out of the one twenty eight. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. In the meantime, we have uh, Forsen versus Deathlord also happening on stream, and one of them will be 2-0 by the end of this match. And I think we're almost ready to get started. So make sure again, hashtag DHS15. Let everyone know that we're up and running again. We have another match about to get underway. It's so important to go 2-0, um, 2-1 two two, or 3-0 -oh today because players will have to spend the whole night thinking about what to do for tomorrow where they can't change their decks. So those who go 3-0 will have this mental advantage where, where they can actually oh. rest without thinking too much. All and right, so taking a look at the, the classes, we have main Shaman and Warlock for Forsen and then a normal lineup of Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior for Deathlore. Now, Deathlore's lineup, I'm looking at as to be the traditional one that you've come to ex expect. In yeah. fact, it's probably got the Patron, the, the Hunter, and maybe even the Demon Lock. Or Handlock. Just, or, or hand lock. And Forsen, in the meantime, he's got his own interesting lineup of potentially being really aggressive or even playing Freeze Mage. I'm really interested to see if it works out for him. Well, actually, I would say uh, it's a big chance that Forsen is running the same lineup as he ran at HTC Tournament. Will be free aggro decks. That might be the Mech Mage, Mech Shaman. Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and, and Zoo. Yes. Yeah, mm. Well, why not Mech Zoo? It, it's it's not. I see Bane of Doom. I don't think Bane of Doom is Mech Zoo. But if you want to talk about the viability of Mech Zoo, I mean. Go ahead. No, no, no. Really, it's not like just a game we had it, to get. It was a rather a joke, you know? By the way. Like, we are sitting here with two Polish guys and an American. It's like a, you know, two Polish guys and an American go to a tavern. They knock to the door. What does the and innkeeper... And no one laughs. Now, <laughs> what does the innkeeper say to that? Uh, well, you know, the innkeeper does not discriminate. He welcomes everybody in, as far yeah. as last time well, I checked. he can say, let the crowd in. You lost me there. That was know. the Temple Storm kind of really oh. long-term joke. Yeah, all right, I got you, I got you. This got is where you laugh for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right uh, Boy Walker stopping the Leper Gnome, one of the best. That's a great opening because one thing that Hunter does really well is pressure Warlock uh, extensively through the early game by curving out very strongly. 
And then it can leverage that pressure and turn into a racing scenario where, because Warlock sometimes has to expend resources to secure the board, they often have to tap uh, and as the game develops. And because you're tapping and you're Hunter's hero powering, it's like, well, that's four damage to Warlock a turn. And then you end up just killing them even though they build up a board. But it's this a is a great start. For yeah, Warlock. it is a great start. And then Gangbus was huge as well to yep. fill the uh, turn three. Well, both players are a really great start here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Voidwalker and, or sorry, uh, Le Lepernome into Mad Scientist into, like, the weapon or coin shredder is still very good, powerful options here. As uh, a couple guys here, looks like <laughs> one of them was showing off their biceps. The absent it? one. The absent one. Was it Pasha? It's nothing compared to your biceps, Lothar, let's be real. What about uh, Pasha biceps? Or, or yours. You have biceps, too. Yeah, I try to squeeze things once in a while. <laughs> I feel like the Shredder here is really good, but at the same time, your curve next turn is a little awkward. And the weapon does end up presenting some good removal options too in the future. It's just that this turn, the weapon doesn't get good usage. Yeah, so this what, what, what's the best here? This turn, the weapon seems to be the optimal play when it comes to mana usage. But as you said, it's really awkward to do with, with anything with it. Like, the weapon would just deal nothing. Like the yeah. other option was to kill the Void Walker and then go to phase with Mad Scientist, but doesn't really that doesn't really achieve anything. No, it becomes like Light's Justice status. The thing that he's setting up here possibly is Juggler on the because there's a gang boss. So some minions are going to get played. Wow. Attack into yeah. the, the gang boss, and then on the Juggler. Yeah, th this this might seem perplexing to Death Lords, like well. You know, maybe I'm running explosive when I'm. How are you going to load it up? But he's got Defender of Argus the next turn. So even if it was the worst case scenario where he threw in like one explosive with the freezing, he'd be able to slap down Defender of Argus and yeah. be able to push for damage. But this shows that there's no explosive trap in there. They're killing the, the Dire Wolf. Yeah. This yeah, is possibly sure. freezing, right? Because he wants to return one of those things. Yeah, yeah, most likely, because if it was explosive, he wouldn't care about those minions. Yep. Uh, it's just that the Dire Wolf is just really powerful Ooh. trade. Oh, unfortunately, Forsen rolls low. That's actually the worst outcome for a lot of reasons. The Shredder lives. Uh, nothing trades well into the, the Pilot Shredder. Well, it's going to be effective on the board. <laughs> to be honest, I was thinking about um, bouncing back the Imp Gang boss, then flame, flame Imp into the Pilot Shredder, and then you have a pro 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 probable a Bane of Doom on turn 5. You still do on turn 5, based off whatever comes out of the Pilot Shredder too. Yeah, but now you're mana ineffective, because those turn 5 for Forsen, and you could have just done, you know, Bane of Doom this turn, and turn 6 might have been, like, implosion to anything right. else. Well, this is uh, the bad news that we were talking about. The fact is the Hunter can control the board pretty easily from this stage on and Snowball. So Forsen needs this Bane of Doom to be... Malganus! Yeah, but even if he gets a... Does it need to be Malganus? Like that or like Doomguard? What about Pitlord? Uh, Felguard wouldn't be bad either. Oh, look oh at my that. god! He got Malganus! Oh, yeah, got turtle. That oh. was Malganus. Was that your Polish Malganus? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that sounded weird. I am the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deathlord doesn't... Does have an answer to it. Yeah, of uh, course. The kill command to kill it off. But then he has to sacrifice um, the Raptor too, right? Oh, or the Bow Charge. Bow Charge wouldn't be awful. Nine damage to the face, you really want to risk that? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Let's Versus see. No, 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 it's fine to just kill Command and attack with the Raptor. And then you still have... Yeah, but I really like leveraging the board. Because then if you kill Command and then use your own face, then you can play Lepernome and Hero Power. Put him down to 14. Or 12, actually. The, the invulnerability is so weird here because he can't attack face. So he won't attack with that like at all. Does he care about attacking face if he just uses no. his own defender of Argus? He just yeah, he just drops the defender of Argus and that's it. And flame Imp doesn't do damage to him anymore. Yeah, flame Imp, defender of Argus is pretty nasty. It's like yeah. the the, imp, um, the flame Imp will be five four. And the thing is, uh, Forsen knows his opponent could have killed Malganus. He had seven damage on board with the weapon. Yeah. So it's like, this is a pretty obvious setup for something else. It's like, well, you left Malganus on the board, so clearly you want to leverage the board to push for a win, so I have to defend up here for yeah. sure. Yeah. So do you, do you guys suggest, like, the Finn of Argus on the Flame Imp? 
so that he has to kill the flame him instead of just going for Malganis first? I think you have to taunt up Malganis just in case that something happens, like a Hunter's Mark Silence. or whatever. Right. You, you have to get that second taunt. It's yeah. it's the best. You don't care really about uh, the Malganis being killed because it's it just it, it acts like a sponge. Right. It, it gets so so much damage into it. You definitely right? turned more into the control deck here based off of your hand as well. You have a second Malganus, you have another Dr. Boom, so you're going to win the late game. Yeah. You just have to make sure to avoid taking too much damage to the point where you can't actually do anything. Exactly. But the question is, what does he taunt? Taunt both or just taunt one? Yeah, I mean, look at that both. flame, it becomes a 6-5. You have to kill Malganus first and then still get through three points of health. Yep. Oh, that's oh, going to help, though. That's that, good. That's going to definitely help. He might not need it. No, he, he actually doesn't need it. So kill command to Malganus, sacrifice the, the raptor. raptor, then the imp becomes uh, Fourth, four, th four three. three. So you kill it with your weapon, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, you can take the damage. You have a lot of health still. I mean, this is this is starting to be where forcing can stop taking damage. Then how does Hunter do the second Malganus? Guess what? The Hunter hero power is not really good against when when your opponent has a Malganus just, on the board. Just wait for an owl. Oh, that's true. Another owl. Just a good silence. Or and also, he has to kill this defender of Argus, right? He doesn't want it to bounce back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, that is a very good point. Yeah, he wants to protect your freezing trap. But still, he does so much damage to face anyway. Hmm. Well, he can put him on 8. Eight's pretty tempting. Yeah, I guess the 8 might be more important because the defender oh. of Argus with 6 mana is not really usable at all. And you have the Lepronome, you have the hero power. So even if uh, your opponent deals with the whole board, you still deal four damage. I think he's also considering the possibility of um, of Doomguard and how that interacts with Freezing Trap. If he ends up killing off this Argus, it also not only plays around the Freezing Trap, but also denies the Doomguard from being able to get value. Hmm. So he's going to want to pop this back. But at the same time, it does give another weapon charge. That's also problematic. So okay. what about another Malganus from Bane of Doom? Yeah, exactly. Do you go for Bane of Doom again? That would be hilarious. The problem is you only have three mana left. So if you get something like a yeah. Void Terror... This, this implosion is useless. Like, it doesn't actually fit the curve. If he, needed, if he got, like, another Void Walker or another low drop minion, like the Knife Juggler, it would have been great. But you have to do it because... There's otherwise, you have to well, play Doomguard. What, what's, what's hilarious is that Bane of Doom might summon Doomguard. Yeah. And then you kill the minion plus summon it. I mean, Desperate Times calls for Desperate Measures, and this is pretty high up there. And if you survive this turn, you play Malganus number two? Yep. And you possibly yeah, and you win there. Uh, possibly, assuming he doesn't have an owl. No, no, you, you have to get no, Malganus no, no, no. next turn. The Do Doomguard also might discard Malganus, so right? You, if you want to play Doomguard, you have to get uh, the Defender of August first to your hand. Because then you you have less, less chances of discarding the Malganus. And right. you need the Malganus. That's like... Malganus! Oh! No. No. Oh, my God, he survived. So now he has a chance still. Well, he's got to kill this uh, Lothab. Yeah. Yeah, and after that, there will be four, right. six, nine points of damage. Yeah, so, so short. basically, Death Lord has to pick up two points of damage next turn, and Forsen has to avoid tapping <laughs> <laughs> right here. Oh, he knows. He, he will be dead on board. Lepronome still is going to be the problem. Oh. Clave Zuka is just plus one. Yeah, that no, is plus uh, one. Yeah, 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 you're right. It was only plus one damage right now. It seemed good, but it wasn't good. Hi, this is us, by the way, in case you forgot in what we Storm looked wins. like. We are actually in Stormwind right now, so please don't this raid us. This card will be used next. Wait. This card, but maybe yeah. not this turn. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's kind of a dead draw for now. The weapon is still like three damage, effectively, versus how Glaive Zuka usually gives you the plus one. He cashes oh, in on the, on the damage now. Yeah, he goes in. Interesting. Okay. Well, he just needs to hero power. Can he expect a second Malganis? Right. Well, I mean, you don't expect it. You consider it. But when you instantly drop this one, it's going to be nuts. Wow. Second Malganis. <laughs> and like, then the right. little nod. Yeah, yeah. I right. know, I and know. now he needs an owl <laughs> or a hover. A hover would be good. Hover is enough. Hover is enough. Hover is lethal. Is the lethal? That's six. Not enough. Missing one? No, actually. No. no. Oh, wait. Wait, can he get the yeah, he can still attack into Malganus and then Glaive Zuka. Yeah, in that's fact, a 50 50. He, in fact, he could have avoided this if he played that first. But, so he has to. He who, no, he actually, would he just, no, no, no. Attack first with the weapon to Malganus. Yeah. Uh, play Glaive Zuka, so you yeah. have, yeah, guaranteed exactly. plus one. 
and then you play Animal Companion and you win the game. You yeah. win with the yacht? There's a 67% chance you could have won from there. Yeah, 67%. Instead, yeah. Death Lord, by playing Animal Companion first, reduced his chances to 33%. Or so, it, or so Blizzard claims, because they say it's a 33% chance to summon a random animal. Oh, companion. you're talking about Hopper, okay. Yeah, Hopper now was a possibility for Lee. Yeah, but team. now he has 50%. Yeah, he has 50% yeah, with now the Glaive buffing. But he has to attack first, so it's like taking... Nine. I think you go for it. Yeah. All right, you go for 50% win. Abyss Surgeon getting plus one. Ah, oh, and there it and is. Oh, is. Oh, yeah. God. So Death Lord gets pretty fortunate, because I think... That was a huge yeah, that was that, that could have been a bad repercussion because if Forsen taunts the Void Caller next turn, you're not getting through the Morganis without Kill Command around. No way. No and way. you already used one Kill Command, so he would have been on very few outs to win. So he made his life a lot more difficult than necessary. Few. You know. It was just PM. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. If you want to interpret it that way. No, like honestly, he just didn't see the Leoc play. Uh, like when it right. When I mean, you, you don't consider. You think Huffer immediately is lethal. Yeah. And so you think <laughs> about that, and you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna go for it. But you don't remember, like, oh yeah, Leoc is a possibility exactly. as well. That's why you have to rope each single turn. One of your teammates does that, and that's why yeah, you have. That's why one. you have to play the storm <laughs> in your decks. Yeah. That but was that, pretty intense. That turn might co might cause definitely a few streaks of gray hair, like you know, 50-50 when you had 100% lethal. Yeah. But how amazing is that? He dealt with double Morganis this game. See, he did. And one was like a kind of like a keeper Morganis because it dealt two damage too instantly. Is Morganis with a battle cry of doing two damage? Pretty oh. insane. We have Patron Warrior versus Tempo Mage. And there's the Esportal. Wow. The oh, mirror fun. image is really important in this matchup. Like, it stops the weapon, yeah. which is huge. You protect your, your minions. There is no. El Alright, there's a couple of AoEs, but there's no brawl for Green Patron. Most, most of the time. And there's no Fear yeah. War Eggs in the opening hand. One. Wow, that is the dream opener. Being Top able deck. to put out the Mana Worm, and that Mana Worm might do something like 12 damage this game for one mana. Or 800. Forsen has an amazing hand. Or 800, just round up or down, depending on what's yeah. closer. This will be a huge amount of damage. Like now, he yeah. into Die Wolf. <laughs> no, you can just ping and protect it. I mean, the it's all the same here because you're trying to make sure to continue to build up the pressure against the un, um, against the warrior, and you don't mind keeping things like unstable portal because you have the flame waker, so yeah, you can get synergy good there. Point. So just to throw it there, this is a bad matchup for this kind of mage. It should be without that kind speaking. of opener. Yeah, Th this is the nuts. You know, this is like the opening that you're always talking about. Well, Tempo Mage could win if he gets Mana Worm on the coin into a good curve into yeah. the exact spells like Fireball to pressure for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Even the portal. That's it, it's the same. Like, well, Freeze Mage can win against Contra Warrior if he has <laughs> Emperor on turn six into right. Antonidas coin and other stuff. And Control Warrior doesn't have <laughs> yeah. Armor Smith, you know, <laughs> Shield Maiden, Alex Traza. Shield Blocks, yeah. By the way, guys, this, is the, this is the different version. This is the version with Shield Block. So maybe it actually changes things. Shield Block, Shield Slam. Uh, a bit yeah. of a mixture. It's, it's more defensive for sure. You take out cards like Dread Corsair, which don't really add too much into. Uh, it, it, it does help you a little bit with aggro because it does have taunt, but it's mainly there for the combos. And you need to definitely have like ways to stay alive against the pressure. So Patient Warriors uh, struggles with that often. This portal might be very huge. This is something I didn't really like because um, trading tra oh. trading here with Flame Waker actually says, okay, both yeah, of my moves are dragon. dead. But he could have he could have gone with uh, the Flame Waker to get like you know. <laughs> Two, two, um, two juggles maybe yeah. to the, to the uh, um, yeah. excuse me to the acolyte of pain, but then the weapon wouldn't have killed the flame waker, which is I think kind of huge. Yeah, that's true. It's the one but additional he doesn't card. Want, he doesn't, yeah. But the one additional card and one minion, which can translate into like four damage each turn. I think you're looking at it from, yeah, from that point of view. But you also realize that if it hits the acolyte once, and then he has to split damage, as opposed to he had two mana left for his hero power. Yeah, but he wants to develop Mad Scientist, though, right? Uh, from I think it was better to have the Flame Waker 
on on the board, you know, because now because it, it represents it represents so much damage. I, I don't yeah. mind the avoidance of relying on RNG here from Forsen's point of view, so I'm I'm okay with it. Although one thing that does amuse me is that Death Lord was pissed that he saw Twilight Wealth. And it's like that could have been <laughs> so much worse than a two three. Not to mention that a two three gave you information about his hand. Like, I, I think. Hmm, I, think I wonder what Dragon Tempo Mage runs. Oh, it's an Azure Drake. I think you he was pissed because uh, he saw it as a two one. He was like, oh yes, and then it got buffed as a two three. It's like, oh no, it could have been like Van Cleef. <laughs> it could have been an Armani Berserker. Right, or it could have been a lot of other things. I mean, we could we could play this game all day. But the point is, I don't think Twilight Wolf's the worst. Yeah, definitely not. All right, so going with those patrons to get his board up. Uh, how much damage is it for Forsen? That's at least 10. So <sighs> this is annoying. Yeah. Do you want to use Fireball on the patron? I don't think so. No, I think it can go ham. Like, do you, are, are you within striking distance? And you're very close. Azure Drake draws another card. You can even split it like Mad Scientist goes into the 3-2 Grim Patron. So that way, whatever he plays next would also summon. I, I d yeah, well, I think mirror image is the way to go if you want to pressure your opponent. That's true. Mirror image, mirror entity, and then go face because you deal for damage. Your minions are kind of safe against patrons because they can't spawn. Yeah. And if there's no Warzone commander, it's pretty pretty much safe. So. Also considering the fact that normally Green Patron does not play uh, shield block, we see double shield block now, so there is plus health. But then who plays that? This is not a new build. I mean, this is a new build, actually. People are not playing shield blocks. Yeah, it, it's it's starting to come a little bit more popular nowadays, but at the same time, the shield blocks here will be useful to stay alive. He's going to have to combine it with, uh, you know, maybe a whirlwind effect here. And this does force him play AoE? I don't think so. Does force him play counter spell? That's also important. No, it's, yeah, that's a good point to have. Battle Rage to draw cards first. Armor Smith is important as well to get some yeah. armor. So I guess you can use the shield slam in conjunction with the 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 shield block. Fifteen is pretty significant to just stay above the double fireball range in the next couple turns. So if you whirlwind here, like Armor Smith whirlwinds, you will kill the mad scientist. You will proc the secret. Yeah. You can assume. So this is not a counter spell. You know this is not a counter spell. You can assume this is the mirror entity. So he will. You will give your opponent another mirror entity, which doesn't really matter in this situation. Yeah, that's a good... That, it's not that it doesn't matter, but it is relevant in the sense that um, you don't want to pop it unnecessarily. So this is actually a good hedge bet where he can force a second secret to come out if he has it, but he doesn't. Nope. So he knows mirror entity doesn't uh, get double value here. Oh, <laughs> that has Force is just... That's, that's kind of hilarious. Just yeah. Well, to be honest, maybe he'll just use all of his bad, bad luck right now because this is lost anyway. Well, you, you're saying bad luck, but he had Malganis from mid four, and he had this opening. So I think RNG-wise, everything is even here. But it seems like Death Lord is getting uh, an edge. I mean, I, I think Death Lord's definitely gotten the edge in terms of how the uh, the outcomes have been. You know, the Glaive Zuka comes to mind with how that, that yeah. game finished. Yeah. But for sure, Forsen uh, definitely had his opportunity, his moments, and it's not really working out. All right, so it well, seems like Defilor is, is getting that advantage, and, uh, y you know, Forsen is running out of steam, more or less. He has the Thousand Yeah, trade. like, how does he deal with an armor smith that gets played here? I mean, he gets copied, sure, but and Forsen does gain a little bit of armor, but he can't win the race eventual damage. He just concedes... That'll wrap up game number two here. Death Lord's up 2-0, and I, I was expecting this to be a little closer in the initial stages, but at the same time, it is Conquest, so you can come back. Forsen still has to win with everything up against uh, the Warlock remaining for Death Lord. That's true. I think Forsen still has a chance. He is running free aggro decks, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to counter them. So this Warlock, what do you guys think it is? Is it Demon, Handlock? Uh, I'm going to go with Handlock just to kill the patrons. I feel like people who play patron, who bring patron to this tournament, recognize how strong it is. So you bring patron that can win the mirror, and yeah. you bring something that kills patron. And you just cross your fingers for Hunter. So, <laughs> But you can also like make a whole lineup against patrons, but still lose to patrons. That's true. Well, that's like the same with anything, you know? You can make an anti-Hunter deck with two Kazans and heals, 
and still lose to Hunter. Well, Hunter is like more consistent than Patron, I would say. You so think so? Yeah, I think so. I would probably why, disagree. Why? You, this, is, probably this is where you like, ex like oh, explain sorry, your point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because of the hero power. Because the hero power is strictly um, tuned to your deck composition and your, to your deck strategy. And in the case of Patron, your hero power basically does something that you didn't want to do at all. But on the other hand, you have more draw. So. Well, you know, if you think about the hero power again, his hero power is basically a card each turn. That's true. So I think the draw is not so important for Hunter. That's why people play face Hunter with no draw at all. Because you have the hero power that acts like a card mm. each single turn. Look at that board, by the way. That Ancient Watcher being silenced next turn would be so great to start trading. And then there is the Hellfire as well. Yeah, and what's extra painful is that um, Forsen doesn't have... Like, th this Ancient Watcher could easily th two for one and then, you know, demand a hero power, which you can see is really important to Temple Mage in general. Like, they can't yep. fall behind the mana usage like that. Yeah, it's true. And it also falls behind cards because, yeah. you know, the, if the Ancient Watcher kills, like, two creatures, then Forsen is really in a bad situation when uh, the, the mechanical Yeti doesn't do much. It's right. just a full five minion, basically nothing else, and uh, it can be easily stopped by whatever Deathlord plays with just a taunt. Like imagine a Sludge Bulger being drawn in turn five. Well, at least it gives him a spare part when it dies, and if he draws the Flame Waker, oh. something. That's a pretty good draw, all things considered. The Frostbolt yep. deals with it immediately, and now you can push for it. And he can't Hellfire this turn. He only has three mana. So this means he has to draw a Mortal Coil. Gyraxxus. No Do you play there. the Temple Big Game Hunter? <laughs> temple Big Game Hunter? You might, it's so early. I mean, it, it's against Temple Mage, but you can also save it as a card that you want to play into Mirror Entity. Well, actually, you have the Hellfire next turn. That's also true. Wow, so now you have to kill the Owl. Yeah, yeah now you have to, if you make the commitment with the Yeti, you have to, to kill the Owl just to deny the Hellfire value. Right. Two Belchers, well, that seems to be a really decent draw. Temple BGH this time instead of Hellfire. Even well, though Forsen has only two cards. Yeah, I, I think the the big game hunter this turn makes a lot less sense. Because it's like, you're not going to hide the fact that you have Hellfire. Oh, um, look at that. Forsen yeah. drawing back to back at Azure Drake. That's really huge. Yeah, look at that. Dad is doing it with. Uh, such Belcher is not going to stop him for now. Uh, let's see. Well, Mirror Entity is not going to be. Useful this... Well, is it? Cause, I mean, are you going to press a little bit for damage? So, Frodan, you mentioned that Unstable Portal is your favorite card. Why is that? Well, because it's just so consistent, you know? Like, I love the fact that I know what I get out of it every single time. <laughs> oh, sorry. The worst <laughs> card possible for my scenario. Now, versus Unstable Portal, what my opponent does gets the best card exactly what he needed for my deck. Like a big M Hunter when you play your, like, Straza. Yeah, or exactly. Like, like, like we or played the show You know, match. like Hemet Nesting Wary against my Druid Claw. Remind me, what did, <laughs> I, what did I get when we played the show match live? Kel'Thuzad. Yeah. Yeah. That was a pretty good card. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Ancient Watcher, Mirror Entity is probably the best interaction possible, oh. considering that usually you don't get anything unless it's a spare part that happens to have uh, Rusty Horde. There's 18% 18, 18 chance to get a legendary minion from Unstable Portal. Is he going for 50-50? Oh, I had no idea. Oh, you're right. If no, he doesn't. He can't push for lethal though. But it, if he goes for the flame cannon, the 50 50 flame cannon, a double portal. This is so cool. Oh, oh! oh he hits it. Deathlord Death is really not happy about this outcome. And the fireball. This will be a kill command fireball. Fireball for eight. Fireball for eight. Yeah, so this this is really difficult. Like you might. I mean. All, like, Lothab aside, you might just die to the, the damage on both the minions. It's not even about the spells anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> yes. Wait, th I, like, oh, I so think this is over. You have to play Lothab here. You attack into the 4-1, maybe attack into the Yeti, but then again, you want to deny the spell damage. Uh, well, if you, if, you, if, you, if you play Lothab, you spell block, so you can't play Fireball at all. Uh, but and then dead. you Yeah, but you also kill the Mechanical Yeti. You might get a spare part. Yeah, you so then the spare the part can freeze one of the drakes so or first, even taunt. First of all, you kill the Yeti to see the outcome. 
or just not do oh. that at all? What would what was the incentive to tap here? If you tap, you're still okay. You're still out of frostbolt range because he it only does five damage. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. That's yeah, yeah. Why would why did he tap? Because he can't he can't play that plus. So he wants both them now. Okay, he's playing without spells in mind. Yeah, he has to assume that there are no spells. Yeah. Now, Force is going to play the unstable portals for sure. Yeah, close. All right, Fin Razor Finn Hunter. That's exactly what we expected. Van Cleef. I like to see that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Who's the Vanus? That 18%. So, Forsen, not dead yet. He's fighting back. He won the game with the Mage. He still has the Max Shaman, I believe, and his Zoo with Demons. Yeah, more importantly, he found out what kind of Warlock this was without that's, losing a game. That's very good. Uh, yeah, it, it's important very considering very now he can mulligan a little bit more appropriately. You know, if it's he doesn't like us, if he wants a certain card for that matchup, he can keep it. And here we go. We show straight into game number four. Now Bro. this deck, how, how do you feel like it goes against Handlock Lothar? It's really bad. It's really bad. Demon Lock. Demon Lock does really bad against uh, Handlock. Because most of the time you won't have an option how to clear the big minions unless you have an owl with mortal coil mm -hmm. against like a twilight Drake. But okay. then there's a giant and you have no big game hunters in the deck. So you need to deal damage like, you know, the way the druid does most of the time with his face. So right. It's a really similar case to standard zoo versus handlock where you just get stopped by big stuff. Uh, your board is getting cleared. But um, considering if it wouldn't be a handlock, this hand looks pretty nice with double egg and uh, in yeah. Gangbo's Defender Vargas. Yeah, you're also worried about a Void Terror coming out here. I think I think the Owl is really great. In yeah, two so two. if he Void Terror, it'd be a 3-5 and a 4-4 four, four on the board. It is pretty risky to tap, but that it ends up working matter. out okay. Oh, this is only... Yeah, sorry, this is turn two, excuse me. Then in that case, it's perfectly fine. If you need to prove that Frodan is an idiot, then <laughs> there you go. You can take that timestamp. <laughs> Match number four. Force void first color. Death floor. No. Frodan made a mistake. That's a huge draw. The Void Caller might change the course of the game oh. because of the Malganis in hand. Yes, you're right. And this this might seem like the game that we already saw. Savish versus um, versus Orange. Orange. Oh, you're right, you're right. That was the same. Turn six kill with Malganis on board. In Zoo versus Handlock? Yeah. Or Demon Lock versus Handlock? Yeah, that was the first game of the series. He also has so many demons, right? With the Imp Gang boss. Right. If there is a Hellfire, like, you can't Hellfire this. Shadow f yeah, you can't Shadow Flame this because it leaves up a bunch of minions. It's like, if you silence Void Caller, though, which is the high priority, then you don't have it for the eggs, and the board is resisting its AoE. I mean, this is kind of what makes the Demon Lock so explosive and scary. Yeah, and this is also... This is the blowback from the situation he didn't play the Owl on turn 2 on turn 3 because yeah. now he can't deal with the uh, with the minions and silence at the, as you said at That's the same time I love else. the eye contact you make with me Lothar when you say blowback <laughs> <laughs> it hits me in all the right spots does he really I knew have it. to <laughs> does he really have to take care of the minions here yeah Lothar on curve makes sense like Owl doesn't really pair well with anything other than big game hunter mana wise and that's still really uncomfortable. But now, witness the destruction. Malganis once again. This is just so huge. But this there is a, is a big demon. game hunter. There is a big game hunter waiting in the hand. But it's it's the fact that you just get like if he didn't have this big game hunter, the game would be over. Yep. If he uses big game hunter, uh, is there a moral call at least? There's dark bomb. Well, he could have shadow flamed. And oh dark yeah. bombs, yeah, but then you spawn two in the ruben, and that's not what you want to no, do. No, no, no. Maybe you want them actually. Do you? Uh, I don't you think have so double molten situation. giant. You have. Do you have the taunt giver? No taunt giver for now. But you didn't see any POs. Imagine like a double PO. Now that's eight damage from the from the hand. Right, doom guard as well. This game is not over yet. Deflor is fighting. No, and and. Like Forsen would probably be a lot more mad if he real if he knew that his deck was heavily dependent on just the Melganis. We've seen some aggressive decks. Now I'm thinking about the uh, the person who won Nvidia recently, Victor Stay. He actually played a really aggressive Warlock that was uh, like Zoo with Soulfire and Dark Bombs Wolf and Rider. Power Overwhelmings, Wolf Riders, which like charge minions, wow. and then Melganis. It's like he could, he topped that at like three mana, had Leroy and Melganis. That was like his that was his curve, or and Doom Guards. 
But like some decks are dependent on having Malganus as like a finisher or condition. But this deck is well equipped to go into the late game with lots of threats. Doctor mm -hmm. Boom, mm -hmm. double Bane of Dooms, which can also turn in his favor. I mean, that's that's not bad either. Being able to activate one of the eggs and taunt it up. That's a really good move because now the Nerubian is out of range of uh, Shadow Flame, right? And that's really important. But he doesn't respect the Moldens. There is Silence Shadow Flame and Moldens, right? No, you w you will not Molten. You just Silence Shadow Flame. Well, if you if you had uh, Sun Fury Protector, right? Then you tap and you go right. double Moldens and Sun and Sun Fury, and you almost win the game. But well, he does have a Shadow Flame play this turn with. But does it do much? It spawns two um, minions. Uh, wait. No, it doesn't. It it's spawns one minion, yeah. right? But if you silence, if you use the owl, you can kill one of the minions. Yeah. I I'm thinking that if you wanted to, you can silence. You can. I don't. Because I don't think. I don't want to use a molten giant to shadow flame. But let's just put that out there. Because the, sh the molten giant's really powerful to control the state of the board. And just to finish the game. Right. If you silence, like, the Nerubian, for example, or. You silence the, the five egg. five. You probably silence. No, you, si you silence the five five. Because what's better, facing a four four, or a five one? A five one. A five one, I think. Then but you can draw a mortal coil. But then you're at thirteen. Can you die if there is a five one? You die to. Well, you die to double PO. And, yeah, uh, anyway, so yeah, it's better. And, and a doom guard. I, I, I think, I think it's okay, to just leave a five one, as opposed to a four four. That's like pretty healthy. Oh. So he'll end up Shadow Flame with the Giant, and this is really painful because now, again, the all initiative has been given to the zoo, and you also don't get this double Molten, which is your swing turn. That's another huge opportunity. That's really Depends! Easy. All right, oh, got okay. average results. And now he has a guaranteed snipe on the Asian Watcher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all the same, essentially. It's not yeah. the same. Like, he has the yeah. one less creature yeah. on board. Yeah, it's, it, it's, but effectively, it's like. These minions are going to be able to push through whether oh. or not he has it. There is a Taunt Giver finally for Deflor. So now Twilight Drake, Molten Giant, uh, Defender Vargas? Would you... Oof, I, I'm always really hesitant about leaving Knife Juggler, but that's your best bet here. Second that's implosion might be huge. Yeah, but it's so much Taunt. It's incredible. Kyo. So you can kill one of the creatures. Yeah, we'll see where this juggle lands. It might be relevant for uh, the attack. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, ends up not being. Guess you want to kill off the, the Molten first. So you have to sacrifice Nerubian. Yep. And the thing is, uh, you can leave the Twilight Drake uh, like as opposed to the Molten because Twilight Drake is definitely easy to punish through uh, Silence. And it, he also cashes in because he realizes the power of like things like Hellfire. But that's a complete turnaround. Right it now is. with double heal bot in hand, Belcher. Yeah, he, he's Belcher. almost locked out of the game here. It depends. He has like a very finite clock. It's not, not like this deck really. has a little burst, actually. Like this is a zoo. It depends on the board. You do have Doom Guards. You do have powers, yeah. but you need some minions. I mean, he's using almost all of his mana, but his plays are just so much weaker. Oh, wait, this could be this lethal. Depends on how the yeah. Boombots hit, right? The problem was with Force and situation here is oh. was the fact that he that's didn't. It. Oh. That's it. Enough. Yeah. GG. Yep. He what? did free damage on the, on the I, I think like Force didn't top enough in this game, because now he was left without any cards, right? And he would have had get more options if he just wouldn't overextend, and top more. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. They're still both in the tournament. I mean. Of course, definitely it is because he's 2-0, but... <laughs> he wins and he's still in the tournament! Yeah, but <laughs> Forsen is 1-1 one, one at this, uh, this point of the game, right. or at this point of the tournament, that still he can go 6-1 or just 5-2 and get a decent result and, you know, brag on the stream that he wasn't 4-0. It or depends. Or forward, uh, well, are you forward, the type yeah. of player, like, like say you're 2-2, two and two, would you play out the rest of the tournament? Or I even would. though you're eliminated? I would. You would? Yeah. Just for the just just to see how it pans out. To prove for the coast you came on ranking points. And yeah, for that too. Yeah, because if you forfeit the rest, I mean they'll pin you on two and seven. Or, or whatever they? the score. I don't two think so. Two and five. If you drop out of the tournament, you you, you, you severely you underestimate Ghost Gamers what they'll do for their <laughs> system, man. <laughs> There's one positive <laughs> in Forsen's uh, loss. He concealed no his shaman uh, shaman list. Uh, I guess that's a mech shaman. I mean, w it's guess. pretty, it's pretty no, obvious no. it would be that. Like, I forced him to play it a lot on stream, so I would be surprised otherwise. 
In the meantime, I think we're going to invite Deathlord up on the, the desk to see if you have a couple of words, if you can get the, the signal here. We can wave at him twice. There it is. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Uh, that, that was a pretty quick series, all things considering. So, Deathlord, welcome to the desk. Hi, guys. Congratulations. You've been hailed as uh, the best player from Greece. Is that true? I can't confirm that. It's up to anyone else but me, I guess. You cannot deny it either. I cannot deny it either. All right. I like that. I like that. Uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself as background, because people may have seen your name when they look at tournament results, or they might have even seen you in other events, but may, they may not know too much about you. So go ahead and introduce yourself at this stream. Yeah, I, I pretty much play the game since closed beta. I love tournaments. I'm a tournament player. I had some uh, good victories under my belt, like uh, I have played in the Pinnacle, in the Gamers Origin Cup. Uh, lately, I won a, a big uh, land in Greece uh, with some invites as well, the Brawlers in finals. And now I'm trying to make a bigger name for myself in this yeah. tournament. I have an <laughs> even more important question. Yeah, what's up? Why did you get so frustrated when Forsen got the, the whelp from the Unstable Portal? Uh, because uh, I would clear it with my weapon, so I knew that he had a Zordrek in his hand, which meant uh, I did not want in turn 5 to... I, I, I had to play my patron in turn 5, so he did not play uh, a Zordrek on curve. So I, I had to tell that he has a Zord Drake in his hand, which is bad for me. I can't let him play on curve, so I'm forced to play my patron. That's it, 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 two reasons that's bad for me. But in this situation, you knew what will exactly happen. So that was also a good thing for you. Yeah, but if it was 2-1, it would be even better, since I knew there would be no Azure Drake, and it would be die instantly to the, to the death spot. Well, you wouldn't see the Twilight Whelp there. He wouldn't play yeah, the, the Whelp play it, death you know? spot, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm not, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. But uh, still, it's fine because uh, I don't take. A, uh, he was trying to rush me at yeah. that point, so any card in his hand is good for me. Yeah, that's true. Deflor, you are the guy who prepares a lot. Like you, uh, we, I interviewed you before, and you said like you prepare a lot for those tournaments. And you were second at Gamers Origin 2 with 400 players Swiss, I, I believe. Yep. So uh, how did you prepare for this tournament specifically? Mm -hmm. I have played a lot of tournaments uh, in the past days, like uh, open qualifiers, uh, even the weekly ones. I tried. This, I have played this format uh, since like uh, three weeks ago. It's actually the same format that uh, led to my big LAN victory like three weeks ago. But I've tweaked some cards here and there in order to make my matchups better and uh, like uh, to fit my decks into the meta more. So what did you target? Uh, if I target something, yeah, my deck is very good against uh, Druid. Actually, Handlock is not excellent against Druid, but I'm very comfor comfortable playing this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, but pretty much, I, I want to bring my three best decks, the three decks I'm most comfortable with, and I believe those three decks are probably the three best decks in this format. I know they're going to be countered a lot, but they're it's, still the it's, best. It's for a risk. Still really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even then, sometimes they counter your format, and you actually have good decks. Or they, they're trying to counter deck. Say they have a targeting patron, but the other two decks end up grabbing a win. The patron has three chances to beat unfavorable matches, which patron is still pretty good at being able to pull out a win. It's kind of like the druid thing. You know, druid sometimes, yeah. even if you target it, draws wild growth and innervates, and you can't stop it. So it ends up being that way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, congratulations. Uh, you. you know, we'll beat Forsen too. So then you're able to put it. A pretty good mark, because I know a lot of fans were... They were rooting for him, unfortunately. I don't want to ruin your <laughs> dreams and be like, well, everyone was cheering for you, man. A lot of people uh, were also hoping that forced him to pull out the win, but you are able to defeat him. Was there anything special about that to you? Uh, it's actually the third time I've played with Forsen, mm -hmm. and I'm 3-0 ahead, so Ooh. it was nice mm -hmm. keeping my streak. Yeah, I actually gotcha. beat him twice in the pinnacle. Uh, something I wanted to add is that uh, a lot of people bring three aggressive decks, or two aggressive decks and handlock to counter Patron. But my deck includes shield blocks and shield slams, as well as armor smiths, which is which makes the aggro matchups much much better. Yeah, of course. So yeah. it's. So I what did you cut f uh, for those four cards? I'm not playing uh, bodies like uh, belchers, uh, corsairs. I play one loot yeah. order. Oh yeah, makes sense. No gromash. But double cruel taskmaster. Nope. Just one. Uh, nope. Don't don't spoil the deck. He's playing you. three cool taskmasters. I'm playing three. Yeah, that's it, this yeah. is the tavern droll, but we didn't see the update yet. That's, yeah, that's right. Something new. The, the mythical tenth deck slot. <laughs> also, I also wanted to ask, like, how is Greece doing so far? Did you come with many players? How is Greece doing? That, that's, that's yeah. Can you give us, a, question, can you give us you know? a temperature reading on Greece? <laughs> we are eight at the moment. Well, financially, since Crip left the country, they've actually <laughs> been struggling a little bit more. But Deathlord's about to win 
potentially sixteen thousand dollars and get a, a nice uh, shot in the arm in the economy. But you know, like the Greek players are actually together, right? Like you guys test a lot together, or is it more? Yeah, stronger? not with everyone, uh, since some guys are in specific teams. Uh, but uh, I play with most of the Greek guys, and some of them are really decent. Yeah, you know, Hawkeye did pretty well. He faced hyped uh, in the first round, was able to beat that. And Hawkeye's a pretty strong player from what we saw in Europe versus China. And uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing how more the Europeans community collide here. Because, you know, we, we talked about the, the, the Greek scene, but there's also the French scene. The French scene is usually isolated from a lot of people uh, on Twitch, considering that they usually speak French first and they're not using English as their first language. And a lot of the players are really good. You know, you need is here. Maverick is the here. Fischer. Maverick's playing Savits also. Maverick is Belgium. Maverick is actually Belgium. From Belgium. Well, he, he, he's, he's with the French community. You're correct. Yeah. But, it, you know, he mainly plays on that channel. He's on Millennium, etc. Yeah, that's true. Don't, don't try to peg me as like, <laughs> oh, all Belgians are French look alike. It's not it's true. It's like Polish and Russian, though. He is, you know. <laughs> yeah, both different. have polar bears, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Well, anyways, uh, congratulations again. I thought we don't want to take too much of your time. You have to get ready for uh, your next matches. But in the meantime, we're going to take a break uh, and figure out what's going to come up. It should be Heat 2 of Round 2, where we tackle on who is going to be 0-1 and eliminated or stay alive. And if that's the case, then we have Dog from Complexity versus Nyria from Team Liquid. Can't believe these two are matching up. But that's the way the Swiss rounds are going. So stay tuned, guys. Be right back.